Hello everybody! In this tutorial I will be showing you situations that happen quite often when we are practicing AutoCAD. Here I give you tips which will help you to struggle less than you used to. Some of them is just useful information to improve your knowledge. So let's start with blocks. When I change a block to another layer, nothing happens. So, in this situation, I have this door as a block reference and I am going to change it to a different layer. I choose, for example, furnitures and I realize the door didn't change the color to yellow as it was supposed to happen. Also, you may ask, on the properties panel I have the color set up as by layer. Why is it like that? When I create the block, I should always put the objects on the layer 0. So I am going to create a block for these objects and click OK when I finish. When it's done, I can move the block to the layer that I wish and it adapts its properties. As you see, now the color is changing. How to delete a block? Porch. To delete a block, it's not as simple as pressing the delete key. If I go to the block panel and click on insert, I can see here the list of blocks that I have in this file. There is no option to delete a block directly. For that, I need to use the command porch. Example, I want to get rid of the block door test. However, that's not possible if I have references for this block in the drawing. As I have just this one, I can select it and press delete. Now, let's type porch and press enter. In this window, I can see which items I don't have objects in the drawing. In my case, the only item not used is a block, because it's the only category which has a plus before. I click there and I can see the block door test. If I want to purge just this block, I can uncheck all items and check only the block. Finally, click on purge select items. If I want to purge all items that are not used in the drawing, I click on purge all. Insert blocks from other drawing files. Sometimes we want to insert one or more blocks from a file that we were working previously. How can I do it? As from this list I can insert only the blocks I have in this file. Simple. Go to the View tab. Then click on the icon Design Center on the Palettes panel. Another way to access it is to type the command Design Center. Once in the Design Center window, I have to find the file that I'm looking for. It's this one, Bus Furnitures. Then, these are the types of objects that I can import. Blocks, dimension style, layers, or these and others. I double click on blocks. And these are the, all the blocks I have in the file Bus Furnitures. Now, to import a block from this file is quite simple. I double click on the one I want to insert. Here I click on OK but pay attention on the unit of the block. It's millimeters. Finally I can just place it on the drawing. That unit is what you define on the drawing units of that file. In this place where it says millimeters. Layout. I don't want the viewport border to appear when I print this drawing. One very common issue users have is that by default the viewport border appears when we print the project. How to hide it? I can create a special layer for the viewport and then switch it off. Go to the Layer Properties Manager. Click here with the right button. And create a new layer. Set a name for it for example viewport. Then I can change to another color if I want. 
Now, select the viewport. Go to the Layers panel, click on the tab and then select Viewport. To turn off the layer, I can simply click on the bulb and as you see, the viewport is not visible anymore and will not be printed. VP Colors As usually, we work in AutoCAD with a dark background and it's more comfortable to use light colors in our layers. However, when it's time to print the drawing, I realize the colors are too light for a normal white paper. No problem, there is an option to set up different colors for printing. First, I need to go to the model space of this viewport, double click there. Then go to the layer properties and as you see, next to the column color, there is another named VP color, viewport color. Basically, I can just change these colors to darker ones. Let's do it for furnitures, as they are very hard to see. Choose a darker yellow. And this time, ah, it's much better. So you can do the same process for the layers you want to print in a different color. Tips for having a good use of Object Snap Object Snap is a function we must use if we want to make our drawings with precision. However, it's quite common that non-experienced users struggle in some situations. In this tutorial, I am going to show you some of the most common. Turn on just the snap modes that you need. If you click on the snap mode list, you can see the points that we can snap to. Of course, I can turn them all on, but I don't recommend doing it. The reason is, it can be more confusing to draw objects, as more points show up when you drag the pointer near them. Switch off the nearest mode when I don't need it. This mode is used for snapping, for example, a line to an object without being to a specific point. Now let's suppose I want to draw this line here. I hover the end point, drag to the right and you can see the nearest mode appearing along with extension. If I type the distance of 2 right now, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's what happens when I have modes overlapped. The best is to turn off nearest, so it now works better. Now, look to this different situation. The mode nearest is off, and what I want is to start a new line intersected more or less around here. As you see, it's snapping to the end point there. However, if I hover over it, move along the line, and now I can see it snapping to an intersection, and I am going to click to start a new object exactly there. Hatch pattern doesn't seem to appear. Sometimes I want to fill an area with hatch. I click on the command, select for example this brick pattern, then I click here and I can only see a solid color. Everything is white. That happens because the pattern scale might be too big or too small. To change it, I have to go here and in this example, as the distance is 3.3, maybe I need a number smaller than 1. I try 0.01. It's still big. Maybe 0.002 and this looks better. So you just need to try to find the scale that suits you. A closed boundary couldn't be determined. This is a very common problem in AutoCAD and, and I didn't find out the solution straight away. In theory, if you use hatch in an open boundary, that window shows up. The problem is that it's not always like that. 
It could also appear for boundaries that are closed. For example, I am going to try hatch here. I click on this area and it says again, a closed boundary couldn't be determined. The thing is, even this area is closed, sometimes hatch doesn't work when we have only a visible part. Now I zoom out a bit and if I try again, yes, it worked. Basically, just try to have all your area visible because it can also make the hatch incorrectly, like here. Dynamic input. The dynamic input is this box that appears next to the cursor when I type anything with the keyboard or when I draw objects. In this case, it shows the line length. If it have ever disappeared from the screen, Probably you turned it off by mistake. Just click on the dynamic input icon. By the way, if you don't find it, you should open here the list of icons that show up in the status bar. Then tick on dynamic input. Overlapped objects. Sometimes, in complex drawings, it's common to have overlapped objects. For example, here I have a polyline, which is hiding a line below. If I try to select the line, it doesn't let me click on it. But no problem. I go to the status bar and turn on the Selection Cycling. Then place the pointer at the same place and the symbol shows up telling me that there are superimposed objects exactly in this place. I click, this window opens and here I can select the object that I want. I click on the line and now it's selected. Ok, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to Cat in Black if you haven't done it yet. Just click in the icon that is showing here. Also, if you need online private lessons, you can send me an email to the address that I show you there. So, it's everything and see you next time!